In this video, we are going to go over a normal form for context-free grammars called the Chomsky normal form, and we're going to go over how to convert any arbitrary context-free grammar into a Chomsky normal form, in, into a grammar that satisfies the requirements of Chomsky normal form, which will show us that this is a uh, universal normal form. Now, it would be good for you to know beforehand, obviously, context-free grammars, uh, and also the constraints for Chomsky normal form. However, I will review these right now. So, a context-free grammar is in Chomsky normal form if all of its productions satisfy one of these two constraints. Either the right-hand side is two non-terminals, like in this case, or the right-hand side is just one terminal, so something in the, the string alphabet. And we have a theorem that says that if a language is context-free, then that language, all of the strings in that language, except for the empty string, can be generated by a context-free grammar that is in Chomsky normal form. So basically, if we take all of the context-free languages and then remove EPS, the empty string, from any of those languages, then all of the remaining languages can be rep represented by grammars in Chomsky normal form. So the idea behind this conversion will be that we will go through and list all of the possible productions are into four properties. Then we'll show how we can remove each of these properties and end up with a grammar that still generates the same language, but doesn't have any of those properties that we didn't want, and thus we'll end up with something that converts to Chomsky normal form. So the basic idea is that we will take a grammar and then transform it into a different grammar so that we get rid of some property that we, we don't want in the resulting grammar. And we need to show that our transformation procedure will give us a grammar that produces the exact same language. Then we go through and we transform that second grammar into a third grammar, removing some other undesirable property that we want to get rid of. And we show that the language is the same again. The, the language generated by the grammar that we input into the second procedure is the same as the language that we end up from the grammar that is outputted, and we also make sure that any of the properties that we've already removed don't get reintroduced. And if we continue doing this, then we can uh, pipe our grammar through a series of methods to remove a series of undesirable properties, and we'll have a general method at the end that can convert any arbitrary grammar into a grammar that has none of these properties and still represents, uh, still generates the same language. So if we want to remove a particular rule, the way that we do it is by using substitution. So if we look at this grammar here, we, for some reason, decide that we don't want the Y non-terminal. So the way we can get rid of that is to substitute in new rules so that the grammar still produces the same set of strings. So before, we could produce from X A, Y, C, and then we could turn y into b. So if we want to produce that same string, we need a new rule that lets us turn x into a, b, c. So we can add this rule here. Similarly, we might instead turn y into z, z. So we also need a new rule that lets us turn x directly into a, z, z, c. So if we insert those rules into the grammar, and we can then remove any of the rules that come from y, We've got something that still produces all of the same strings as before, presuming uh, Y isn't used anywhere else in the grammar because this is an incomplete set of rules. Um, and we no longer have that non-terminal Y that we didn't want, and we don't have these rules that we didn't want. So what are the sorts of rules that we don't want in Chomsky normal form? So we're going to group the rules into a set of four groups that don't satisfy the constraints for Chomsky normal form, and then we're going to produce a method to remove each of these kinds. The first is rules that go to epsilon. The second is rules where the right-hand side is a single non-terminal, because remember our Chomsky normal form was allowed to go to a single terminal or to two non-terminals. Another option is anything where we've got mixes on the right, so where we've got um, 
non-terminals non and terminals mixed together, or where we've got more than one uh, terminal. So, for instance, AB doesn't satisfy the rules for Chomsky normal form, so we want to remove that. And the fourth is anything that doesn't fit these three um, properties and doesn't fit the properties for Chomsky normal form. And if you sit and think about that, that for a little while, you'll realise that that's only going to be rules where the right-hand side is more than one, uh, sorry, more than two non-terminals. In this video, we are going to focus on the first two kinds of rules and how we're going to remove those. And in the second video, we'll focus on the second set. So those first set of rule productions were we call epsilon productions because they produced empty strings. So the way that we remove them is first we find all of the non-terminals that can eventually just turn into the empty string. So we call those nullable. So anything where I can have a non-terminal, say Q, and eventually follow a series of expansions and end up with only the empty string as my result, then I call that terminal nullable and we'll have to deal with that. So there's two options, either the it directly turns into epsilon is the obvious trivial case, or if we have a rule where the right hand side is only non-terminals and all of those non-terminals are nullable, then Q will become nullable. So first we find all of those nullable rules and then second we go through each of them and any time that we have a rule that contains a nullable term in it, a nullable non-terminal in it, we add the rule into the grammar without the uh, nullable terminal. And the reason is this, if I have a non-terminal P and it can turn into alpha Q beta, and Q can event is nullable, so it can eventually turn into epsilon, then essentially I have a rule, a way for me to get to some a string, a substring, which is just alpha beta because the empty string, when concatenated, doesn't change anything. So what I need is some way to produce that, and the easy way to do that is to just add in a rule, P goes to alpha beta, like this. We also make sure that we're not adding in something that violates our epsilon rules, or not adding in something that is already present. Once we've done that, we just remove all of the rules where the right-hand side is epsilon. So we'll go through an example in the next slide. So. This grammar that we've got here on the right hand side, we will be using as our example for the remainder of this video and the second video. So we'll go through all four steps on this one grammar. Now, if we look at this grammar, we see that we have S can, the first rule here, S can go to little a, capital A. And we also have that uh, capital A can eventually go to B, which can go to epsilon. So we can see that A is nullable. So basically that means that we can follow this through here and produce from S just the string A, because A concatenated with Eps is just A. If we remove the rule that lets B go to epsilon, then I won't be able to produce this string A anymore. So I need to add in a new rule that lets S just go to A. And that's effectively how we will um, modify the grammar so that we can remove the epsilon productions but still generate all of the strings that we could before. So let's follow it through for an example. So in this case, if we look at this, we see straight away that B and D are obviously nullable because they both go to Eps. Now if we look back at the grammar again, we see that A can go to B, so A is obviously nullable, and we see that C can go to B, D, and both B and D are nullable, so C is obviously nullable. Now the only non-terminal that's not nullable is S because it doesn't turn into anything that can be entirely wiped away using nullable terminals. So now that we know what the nullable terminals are, we can go through and add in all of the rules that we are going to need to add in so that we can still tr produce all of the strings we could before and we can remove these rules here that we don't want anymore. So we've got S goes to little a, big A, and we know that big A is null. So we need to add in the rule without the big A. So we need to add in the rule S just goes to little a. We can also see that A goes to CDC, so we're going to need to add in the rule A goes to CD, because we can turn C just into the empty string. 
but we can also turn either of the C's into the empty string, so we're also going to need to add in DC. And because we can turn all of them into the empty string, we're also going to need to add just going to a C and just going to a D. If we look at the expansion for B, we see that there's no rules where we have non-terminals in them, so we don't have to worry about that. And the same is true for D. But if we look at the expansion for C, we see that it goes to C uh, to BD, sorry, and both B and D are nullable. So I need to also add in the rule C goes to B and C goes to D. And if you look down here on the bottom, bottom left, that's exactly what we've got here. So we've added in all of these rules here and we then remove the B goes to epsilon and D goes to epsilon rules. The next set of rules that we need to remove were the ones that where one term non-terminal produces just one other non-terminal and we call these unit productions. So the way we remove them is we go through and we pick one and we remove it from the grammar and then every rule that expands from the second non-terminal we add in to the first non-terminal. So for instance if I had a production B goes to A, A, I would then add in the rule A goes to little a, big A. We don't add in any rules that we've already removed and that's only really because if I had S goes to A and A goes to S then when I eventually removed my S goes to A rule, I would add in S goes to S and I would end up in a loop over and over. So we never add in rules that we've already removed. Now over here on the right hand side, I've got some parse, some parse trees uh, and they'll help us understand what's going on. So we've got our non-terminal X and that's producing Y and then Y can through some rules eventually produce W. If I want to produce all of the same strings without this X goes to Y rule, I'm going to need to produce all of the possible subtrees here using just X. And the way I do that is I just stick any right hand sides from Y as the right hand side for X. And we'll go through this with our particular example in the next slide. So a more concrete example using our particular example is if I start with my start non-terminal S, I can produce the A and then a big A, and then I can eventually use this unit production here to produce just an A. So if I remove the A goes to B production, if we look at the grammar on the left, you will see that there's no way to turn that A into a little a, so there's no way to produce the string AA. So I need to add some new rules in there that let me produce AA without using a unit production. So what we do is we simply take all of the right-hand side of B and we add those as right-hand sides of A. Now in this case, that's just this here. So we end up adding the rule A goes to A up here so that we can end up using this parse tree here to produce the string AA. And we can get rid of this unit production rule here while still producing the same strings we were able to before. So to follow through on our concrete example here, we've got the following unit productions that I've just underlined that we need to get rid of. And the way we get rid of them is we first insert the right-hand side of that non-terminal into um, the parent non-terminal, and then we can remove the rule. So for this case, we've got the rule A goes to B, which we want to remove. So I need to add in the rule A goes to A, because that's the right-hand side of B. I also have this non-terminal here that I want to get rid of. So I need to add in the rule all of the right-hand side of C. However, I have already removed A goes to B, so I'm not going to add that in. And the rule A goes to D is already part of that, so it doesn't make sense to add it in again. So the only rule that I'm going to actually add in is A goes to BD. Now I need to get rid of this rule A goes to D. So I add the right-hand side of D, which only consists of one little b, and then I'm done, and I can remove all of these rules from my grammar, these unit productions. Now I look and I've still got two unit productions from the C, so I need to add the right hand sides of B and D to the right hand side of C, so I'll add the following rules. C goes to little b and C goes to little d. Then I can remove these rules. And that's exactly what you can see we've done down here in the resulting uh, grammar. So the 
this isn't a finished Chomsky normal form. We can see straight away that there's at least a few things that we aren't happy with for Chomsky normal form. This rule, this rule. Actually, everything else is in Chomsky normal form, but we're going to need to get rid of both of those rules before we're finished. And that's what we'll do in the second video. Now, just to revisit a previous slide, we saw that when we want to apply a series of uh, modifications to our grammar to remove properties, we need to make sure that our um, following uh, methods don't add back in things that we've already removed. So if we look at remove units, we need to make sure that does not add any rules of the form A goes to EPS. Now the reason we know this is the case is because it only adds in right hand sides that already exist in the grammar and there is no right hand side epsilon in the grammar that we pass to remove units because we already put that grammar through remove epsilon. So as long as we remove the epsilon productions, we can then remove the unit productions using our method and we won't accidentally add back in any epsilon productions. So what you should get from this video is how we can remove EPS productions from our context-free grammars and how we can use remove unit productions from our context-free grammar. And you should understand how we are eventually going to use them to turn any context-free grammar into a Chomsky normal form that accepts that language except for the empty string.